I'm Carl White. Welcome to Saturday Shop Tour. This week, we take you into the Alaska wilderness to Chalitna Lodge. Owner Steve Silver will show us how he makes this off-grid retreat and artist residency work. Let's get started. Also, don't miss the salmon harvest time lapse at the end of this video. Hey, Steve, thanks for joining us. Great. Thank you so much for having me uh, on. This video is just a really quick little tour um, of the lodge. You know, this whole project has been, uh, you know, like a lot of things, it's been a, it's been a life passion and it also has a lot of different facets to it. There's the artist residence program, which is, um, definitely the forefront and um, the impetus for the beginnings of it but um, as it's developed it's just become obvious that really it takes all of the different aspects of what we do here and pulling them all together from the fishing you know there's the creative and the art side but then there's you know the subsistence fishing side and gathering um, just when you're living out here in such an off-grid location which you'll see in the video um, there's the human interpersonal side and uh, and plant cultivation and architecture and so many other aspects to it. There's also like a, a, a social side to it that's broader and reaches out. So for example, you know, we have issues here with like mines wanting to come in and, and kind of mess up the ecosystem here. So then there's also these kind of more broad global issues that come right here um, all the way out to our doorstep. So um, anyway, thanks for having me on, Carl. Having me, um, having me on. This is amazing. So that was like our little boat ride pulling up to the, the lodge. You can kind of see the background and the lake that we're on. Let's walk up to the main lodge and check it out. This is our this is our fire pit, and um, we've been using this for many years. And uh, what I thought that I would do is give you guys all kind of not just a tour of the lodge, but a little peek into the day-to-day -day life of being out here. So um, we have really great bonfires here for our guests. This is also where we burn all of our trash. <laughs> uh, this is the main lodge, um, the front portion of which was built in the 60s when this was used as a hunting lodge. But the inside was actually built by a family who lived here starting in 1932. Came uh, by way of Europe through Missouri in the Midwest, San Francisco, ended up coming up here when there was no towns. There were pretty much just about, there's maybe 10 people living within, 10 white people living within many hundreds of miles at that point in time. Came out here and uh, just pretty much lived off the land for the first 10 years. So we'll go on in and because of COVID, of course, we're not really taking guests. So now I'm just, Showing you my house unclean. Uh, <laughs> come on into my house uncleaned. Oh, it's pretty clean. This is the great room. Um, and this was built, um, like I said, s sometime in the 60s when this place was running as a hunting lodge. Uh, if there's any architectures, architects looking, uh, you can see these great big beams here. It's kind of strange that they go across. And um, there were more of them going across. You can see here and here and here went across. And those, we believe, I believe without speaking to anyone, uh, there isn't really anyone alive still who was working on it, even though uh, it wasn't that long ago. Um, believe that those were floor joists for a se potential second floor that was never built. And the reason that I know that is because when I started this project about 12 years ago, every floor and every roof on all of the cabins, we have 18 structures here total, but all the sleeping cabins that were log construction, they were all falling down 
from rotten logs. And they were this huge list. And this is our kitchen. And that's Tessa, and she's preparing our dinner for tonight. And, uh, and so normally, like, when we have kind of guest times, um, things are maybe a little bit more organized. Um, but this is the, what, the reason I really wanted to bring you in is to show you this. This is one of the products that is made here at Chlitna is our, our beer. And, uh, we've been brewing beer for quite a long time, um, and we have all different sorts of beers that we make. Um, we brought in a lot of different types of flowers and trees and plants from all over. And these are the sleeping cabins where our guests stay. We have tons of poppies here that, that some of them, the orange and yellow ones, were um, have been here for my whole lifetime. My parents bought this property when I was two, and uh, and so I've been spent I've spent quite a bit of time here over the years. We had so we had an artist Onye who came and she was, she kind of opened up and developed this area. So it's kind of neat. We have all these artists and residents that come in. Um, which we'll talk about more, um, but we have an artist residency program, which is really the core of what we're doing and, and what we're really motivated about out here. And Onya was one of our early artists, and she did a dance piece where she actually um, was buried here um, up to her, um, not quite her neck, like up to here. And she was in there, I believe it was for 36 hours. Um, and I sat here for most of it, just kind of spotting her. Um, and then she, her dance was as she emerged from, from the earth. Yeah, that's a really lovely piece uh, that one of our, we had a poet last year who came and um, she did this installation wrote words. So it's really exciting. We have lots of different work from the artists who spent very much of time here. Of course, one thing people see right away is the big eye and the, and the raven in the lawn done by an artist, Michael Morell. I've done a lot of topiary work uh, in other places in my life. I did this like garden project in Portugal and whatnot, where I got really into it and that kind of thing. So anyway, um, this essentially, it's just this, what you can see is, is the starting point. So this was just done recently. Of course, it needs to grow in and then be retrimmed. And as more growth comes in, then it can grow and I can do new things with it. And then uh, this is my cabin here. And so this is where this is where I live and, you know, we put in a little outdoor sink situation back there. And I got this ball for in, um, in, in Mexico and, and carried it back with me. And so, you know, you have like a nice bowl and you have like a functional thing and you have tension to, to aesthetics, but it's all done in a way that is, um, like really shows the, the stress on, on, on kind of the minimal, uh, that you need to do to make something function properly, uh, you know, all the way from, you know, uh, figuring out that, you know, it, if it sprays really bad like that, you know, just sticking this thing on there, um, so that it'll come out into the thing. And this is kind of cool. The driftwood tile, um, and animal antlers. And this is just stuff that I've collected over years on hikes and, um, and walks down the beach and that sort of thing. Here's a really big part of the place is this is our shop. This, this is the, the, where the, that was our work, work area, kind of a workbench, um, outdoor working area, but this is the shop and this is, um, this is really, um, we have pretty much kind of almost every tool that you would need to do on pretty much any process with wood. Um, a lot of the things that we have are mostly hand tools, um, but we have all of the power hand tools that you could need hiding under this big, uh, big 
This is a big uh, resawing bandsaw that we pull out when we when we need to and that kind of thing. And of course, then we have a back shed with uh, with more tools and that kind of thing. Um, yep. Uh, ideally, what I'd love is to build a bigger studio onto this that could be used um, where we could get a cabinetry saw in here, something like that. That's more permanent. And then our DeWalt. It's really just like a pleasure and joy to be working in this. Oh yeah, nice shot. That's Justin's stairs. I, Justin was supposed to be in here. That was like part of our plan in the video. Is Justin was gonna like, I don't know, be working on something and be like, oh da da. But you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> um, but it's just a really pleasure to work in such an open air shop and. Of course, we close it down for the week winter and board it up and everything like that. But um, it pretty much just stays open air. This is the wall of shame. <laughs> this is uh, the wall of retirement. Retired tools go there. We have two smokers. One is not used anymore. So this is our old smoker, and this is where we smoke all of our salmon. Um, there have been many, much game meat smoked in there as well and uh it's dinner time uh we have the wood stove right here which is we're about to start smoking salmon next week it's not quite ready yet but we have a wood stove right here and we will hook that up through a duct system that will this is our smoker that we have now. So the, so, the, so the wood stove will be somewhere about maybe a good 10, 12 feet away. And we will pipe the smoke up a little bit and then it will come downwards at an angle to come into this thing at a downward sloping angle so that the smoke has a time and a chance to cool before it hits the building. We want to get a cold smoke. Of course, we'll weed whack all this grass before we use it. I haven't opened this up since last year. Ah, in pretty good shape. There's a stove in there right now, but that won't be in here. Uh, yeah, so this is how we access. There's access panels on the other side as well. And then, uh, and so we have these poles. Oh, do you smell that? Mm -hmm. it smells good. Uh, these poles, so we cut down fresh spruce poles and we hang the salmon tails and we'll show pictures of it, hang the salmon tails by the spruce poles and have them hanging in here in series. But mid smoke, you want to be able to access it so that you can, uh, one slipping or falling off or you need to rotate them or something like that. This gives really good access. Um, most people in the area make smoke houses similar to the old one that I was just showing you that you just walk in and you're kind of using ladders and that kind of thing. And we found this one. This is a design I came up with last year and it worked. It worked really well. Um, it just really channels the smoke um, in a way that the smokehouse doesn't. And also the smokehouse is all near to impossible to get a cold smoke. So this actually allows us to get a cold smoke. This is the doorway as well. So we, we put this doorway on the back. So this is to walk in. A big important part of the, the success of this smoker design is this fan that we put up. So you can just walk in too. But is this fan that we put on the back. Um, obviously when the fan blows, this these just the force of the fan blows those open. It both uh creates air draw on the fillets themselves without blowing uh dust and uh smoke and wood ash a lot of times they get like pelted with wood ash if you put a fan behind the flames but since we're doing it this way it doesn't really do that it works really well this this was uh a mural done by artist uh Stevan del Val. Um, just a really amazing muralist. We had a couple other sculpture artists come and build this addition onto the 
sauna, you'll get a little, I'm gonna give you a, a preview of the back before you see the front. But this is the back of this outside of the sauna. So you can probably guess what the inside looks like. I mean, sort of. Come on in. Is it on 0.5 mm -hmm. wide angle? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. So you can see this is uh, this is a nice little addition. Here's a bench I built. I just um, took an old cottonwood log and kind of chainsawed a huge slab out of it, and then took took these root balls and stuff and put it on there. Um, that stove I moved in here from the kitchen it was almost broken I used to make pancakes on that stove when I was a little kid when it used to be in the kitchen so it's a really neat mix of kind of history and now and um, projects starting and ongoing um, like the back of this um, stove area where you see this rock board that'll be a mosaic one day you know and 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 they happen um, Continuously over time. Why does it get hot in here? So it's not just a, a sauna for steaming and getting hot, but it's actually our bathing spot. So we actually, I mean, in the winter when it freezes or in the spring and fall, uh, when the water is not running um, through our pipes and whatnot, we can't shower. And so this is our literally it's our bathhouse that's what they call it around here is a bathhouse or a sweat lodge um, when we get really hot in the sauna then we run out and jump in the cold lake awesome so this is the big yurt there's people have names for it uh we it's a really great place to work so um Natalie Prouser, who just scooched away. She's making these prints right now on, uh, she took that as a, that was a Polaroid. And she took, I don't remember what she, I don't know how she did it, but she put it on fabric. She developed some film, actually, fit, that's a Polaroid, but she also developed some film out here using oranges and coffee. And then she developed the film and then she took the negatives and she scanned the negatives and then printed them onto I think like vellum or something and then used emulsion to print through the I mean amazing so cool this is inside the yurt so this is sometimes it's set up as like a bedroom it might be dark in here on the phone uh, oh, cool. I haven't been in here yet. Yeah, this is, I guess this is the vellum that she printed. Oh, yeah, so she totally, um, that's amazing. She, this is the film, I suppose, that she developed mm -hmm. here using oranges and coffee. Who would have known? This is a press. We have a press over here for printing that was made by uh, an artist who was here for a while named Will Dix. And it's using a bottle jack, which this is what we use to like fix all the cabins. So we had a bunch of extras. And so we just used that and a couple angle irons to make this, uh, to make this press. And there's been quite a few artists who've made some really neat prints off of that. I could go on for hours. Um, there's so many little details and big details. Um, the last thing that I do want to go and show you is the, the electrical system and the water system. So um, we will walk up there and um, I'll show you how we run the power of this place. Right? Okay, this is the generator shed. This is where we generate electricity. Um, we have, one of the first things that I did <clears throat> when I came here and started running this place and trying to turn it into the program um, was start with a renewable energy system. And um, so we, this is a, this is a generator 
This is a 17, uh, I believe, yeah, 17 um, kW kilowatt generator. So this can provide enough electricity to charge our batteries to run electric hot water heaters. I mean, the bandsaw, everything on the property can all run simultaneously while using this. So we use that to our advantage and try and group, you know, high energy things all at once when the generator does have to be on and save normal day-to-day -day operation stuff for this bank of batteries. You can see uh, I started with four and uh, ACDC, right? Um, here are the batteries. So, yeah. And then um, Justin came and joined our, our ranks and um, we added four more batteries and he added the Tesla box. Um, good, perfectly appropriate response to ACDC. Um, yeah, so just like everything here, um, you know, without any experience in electricity or wiring or anything like that, you just, you read manuals and you figure it out, um, essentially. So we have our power flow that comes through this way. We have our charge controller for our solar panels, which, um, which, which we have nine, um, nine of them and, um, the inverter charge controller for the, um, for the generator and that sort of thing. Now, the other aspect of power is fuel. And then the other kind of big thing in terms of our utilities is of course water. So I'll show you those. Well, I can work backwards on the water. Of course, the water goes out to the main lodge and to the upper bathhouse. Um, all right here is where the main branches are. Um, we have these filter systems which get changed out every week. One is a coarse filter to get out sediment and dirt, and the other is a micron filter, just in case there's some kind of weird, weird stuff in there. However, there never is. Here are fuel tanks, one for diesel, one for gasoline. So working back up in the water system, here's the pump. If you come up closer, you can see that's the water pump, and it's just a normal kind of shallow well pump. Um, the water comes from our stream in right here and goes out right there into these holding tanks. Now let me show you our stream setup. That's all pretty standard. We have, this is the second of two creeks in our property. Um, very, very simple system. And um, you can see the, the water here. <laughs> it's, that's good. You don't need the filters, but we use them anyway, just in case. Um, yeah, basically a, a, a tarp. We put down a log and screw a tarp to it. And then the tarp gets laid out along the bottom of the creek. We put a couple of rocks on top of it to hold it from getting, from getting like washed down. And that just holds the water back. Eventually over time, sediment gets piled up on top of the tarp and holds it in place even better. You can see the underneath side is kind of cool because you can totally see the tarp. <laughs> it's, yeah, there it is. And then just a hose with a filter on it. And that is that. Thank you so much, Carl, for inviting me to share this place. It's uh, really an honor to be um, part of your project. Um, and it's always a joy for me to share this place that I hold so dear in my heart.
All right, what do you have? I got a funnel cake and a schnitzel. And I ain't got steak. no funnel cake. I ain't got no schnitzel. I got a steak. Relish. There you go. Okay. Relish is in the kitchen. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more like it, please consider subscribing. We feature a new Maker Shop Tour every Saturday.